Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun to explain and break down the one-eyed polar bear on True Detective Night Country. My guy, I, as a fellow entity who has one functional eye, <laughs> I am completely blind in my right eye. I'm legally blind in my other eye. At least I can see out of that one. But like, I feel a kinship to this polar bear. I, I, I love it as a symbol. I love what it represents seemingly to this show. And the polar bear has shown up in a number of different forms and we're only three episodes in. So that's a sign. This is pretty darn important. Yeah. I mean, it really has been a important part of the show. There's lots of questions about the one eyed polar bear. So we're here to go through all that, explain what we can about it, sort of what these connections are and what the theory sort of is of like how they're all connected together. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool thing that I think this show has done. You know, I, I like to think that we have cracked the code on this one. We have figured it out. But of course, it's all just theories. It's all just a part of the fun that comes with discussing this show. And, you know, we've said this before. All theories are welcome. All theories are valid. It's yep. just a fun part of, like, the greater true detective fabric. And, you know, this is far from the only sort of symbol or idea that's being brought to us here. All right. Everybody put on your tinfoil hats because this right. whole video is going to be a bunch of theories about this <laughs> yeah. one-eyed polar bear. So we've seen that Navarro has seen an... Uh, an actual polar bear. And I say actual because she's been seeing a lot of things that... Uh, aren't there or aren't exactly what they seem to be like Londa sitting up in bed. You know, we spoke about that yeah. a little bit in our review, which we'll have linked for you below to check that out. But yeah. she also hit her head on the ice and saw, you know, a, a hand of a child touch her and, and holding the little stuffy polar bear, which we know that Holden, you know, Danvers son also had this little one eyed polar bear. So my theory is this, is that the reason that Navarro is having these visions, because typically True Detective is not a show that's like really supernatural. It's typically like yeah. there's things that seem supernatural and then the Scooby-Doo mask comes off. And it's like, ha it was me all the time. It's just reality. Yeah. They may be doing that this season. They may not. But if they are doing that this season, I'm starting to feel like things like the one-eyed polar bear, which are connected to Danvers and why she's seeing that. She hears Twist and Shout. We're going to be getting deeper into Twist and Shout, just mm -hmm. so you guys know. So hit that subscribe button. We actually have a theory on Twist and Shout everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's connected. That's going to be coming up tomorrow. Um, but she hears that out on the ice. There's the orange that nobody knows what's going on yet. But my theory is is that with the car crash, if the timelines actually match up, mm -hmm. then maybe what has happened is Danvers or Navarro has either seen pictures of the car crash or knows a bit about it, that maybe the song was playing there. The polar bear would probably be in the car because, you know, that's Holden stuffy and he seems to really like it and bring it. Maybe there was, they were eating oranges in the car. Maybe it's all just connected to that accident and those things are are starting to come back to Navarro because some of it is connected to Wheeler and everything that's going on there. I think it's it's very <laughs> important that because this is a six episode show, they don't have a lot of time to kind of just like go off in all these different directions without finding a way to bring them together. And we did spend a good bit of time on Wheeler and seeing what happened that caused Danvers and Navarro to split apart in yeah. episode three. And all of that does have to be significant. All of this does have to sort of match up into, okay, what are these characters sort of seeing and feeling? And a big sort of theme that we're kind of sensing throughout Night Country right now is this idea of trauma. And trauma can play out on an individual basis where, you know, we've seen both Danvers and Navarro have trauma that's coming from different parts of their lives. But then the greater community of Innes, Alaska is also dealing with its own trauma. It has basically mm -hmm. the mines, Salal, these things that have come in and have served as these threats to the community. And I think there's these questions of, okay, you know, what can be done to save the community, what can be done in order to protect the community. And that's further what makes this polar bear so interesting because 
in a lot of Inuit culture and religion, polar bears are seen as protectors, as symbols of strength, of symbols of resilience that you can continue to battle back. I mean, these are animals who literally live their entire lives in the freezing cold. Like, this is not an easy environment for them to live. Yeah, it's not. And then sort of the the leader of the polar bears, if you will. Like, I'm, I'm not an Inuit historian, but based on the research that I've done, Nanook is sort of seen in Inuit culture as the leader of these polar bears. And it's almost a deity-like figure and somebody who can punish hunters who violate tradition, customs. It sort of presents itself as the law of the <laughs> land. And I think it all of this matters because they could have given Holden any stuffy they could have come up with any different animal yeah i know polar bears are you know native to alaska but they mm -hmm. could have had other animals that were around navarro that mm -hmm. were present it's just you you chose a polar bear specifically for a reason and i think that's very intentional yeah because when navarro has this like flashback to this child putting their hand on her and being like, you know, please tell mommy and nothing else sort of thing and holding the polar bear. I think we're meant to assume because we don't see the face that this is Holden trying to tell Navarro something. And so my tinfoil hat theory, like I said, yeah. we're going to get more into this in our twist and shout video tomorrow is that Wheeler is connected to the death of Danvers husband and child. Like we know from the story that Danvers told and how much of it is true and how much of it is not true. Yeah. We know that she left some stuff out when she was telling Pete that story. So take this theory for what it is that she was saying that her and Navarro had been called to this guy's place like every week yeah. for what was going on, you know, with his girlfriend and that it was escalating over and over and over again, to which I'm sure Wheeler was like, ah, this cop is here all the time. Ah, I got to do yeah. something about this. And maybe he did. Maybe he followed her home one night, saw the husband, saw the kid, saw the polar bear, hearing Twist and Shout. Maybe Twist and Shout was playing on the radio when the car crashed and they died. But it feels like Holden in this dream sequence was trying to tell Navarro that maybe it wasn't an accident and that this was on purpose. Maybe he knows more or in this vision more is coming out. Maybe Navarro herself felt like more was behind this car crash and that maybe it was connected to Wheeler in some sort of way. And that would explain why he's whistling that when they come in, that he knows he knows and was responsible for that. That was like, oh, you're going to come into my house? You're going to mess around with my life? And now I'm going to do that to you. Yeah, I think ultimately this is something that's not going to go away. And I think that <laughs> if, if Navarro's having some of these sort of thoughts about, okay, you know, was this really an accident? Was this murder? It's going to live in her head. And I think it would make sense then that it would manifest itself in the form of Holden, somebody directly tied to it, the polar bear, something that's very tied to Holden himself. And I think what's great about the polar bear's representation within this show is that it can sort of be brought up in a couple of different ways because, you know, stuffed animals, we sort of look at them and we view them as, oh, like, look how cute. Look how, look how sweet. Because we all had stuffed animals growing up. Like I, I still have stuffed animals now. I'm almost 50. Well, I just bought one on the weekend that looks just like my bunny, Miss Phoebe Fun. <laughs> I was in this like squishable store and there was this little white bunny there, all fluffy yeah. pink ears. I was like, oh my God, that looks like my rabbit. And I had to pick that up. You know, they're good at any age. They, I Let's had a, go stuffies. I had a giant bear who I just called Big Bear. And it's just like, this is just the sort of deal where you grow <laughs> attached to these things. And when you sort of see the stuffed polar bear with the one eye, it's really hard to actually try to extract that much meaning from it. At first, because as all of us who grew up with stuffed animals know, mm -hmm. they go through a lot, especially if you're like Calvin and Hobbes and you're just like bringing this stuffed animal everywhere and, you know, there's going to be accidents. Oh, my goodness. I have like I still have one of my brontosauruses from when I was a kid. All yep. the stuffing has come out of its <laughs> neck and it's kind of like sitting like this. I had like a little white rabbit puppet it, that had red eyes. It only has one now that fell out over the years, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it's just like, it feels natural. And I think because of that, it's easy to sort of sit here and be like, okay, the stuffed animal only has one eye for X, Y, or Z reason. But then 
we actually see, you know, this representation of the polar bear, like a real physical polar bear through the yeah. lens of Navarro De- in episode one. And then this polar bear has one eye and you can sort of sit here and be like, okay, so what's going on here? Is this meant to represent, okay, this is just like the physical manifestation mm-hmm. of the stuffed mm-hmm. polar bear. Is there something deeper in the sense where if the polar bear is already a representation of resilience in local culture, the idea of the polar bear only then having one eye sort of symbolizes this polar bear has already seen some stuff. Like it's already gone through a lot. Like I, I've looked at like the specific wound on the polar bear's eye. Mm-hmm. It's there are people who are saying it's kind of similar potentially to the sort of wounds that Annie K had on her body. I can kind mm-hmm. of see it. Like I not fully there. Like I know there's also theories that kind of say that this polar bear is like the reincarnation of Annie K, which is possible. I just feel like more so than anything else, it's just this wound is meant to represent this polar bear still going. It's still resilient. It's still strong, but it also kind of understands the rules of the road and the rules that have been set up in tradition. This polar bear does not hurt Navarro in any way. Mm-hmm. Like there's no real immediate threat that's sort of posed by it. And yes, I'm sure that polar bears are, you know, they're creatures that are a little bit more familiar to people in this part of the world. But, you know, I, I'm still assuming you would have a reaction if you see a polar bear that's just sort of like wandering around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't mess around with a polar bear. A pro- polar bear's just going to kill you, right? But yeah. it doesn't, right? So that's why it feels like it's got to be something that she's seeing and maybe nobody else is seeing. And the fact that she's having also these other visions you know the orange lund sitting up in bed like that that other people just aren't seeing it feels like something is something is happening and so either it is something that is more supernatural or spiritual that's going on out there very possible i mean true detective could be taking a bit of a different curve this season than it has in the past where it's kind of played around a little bit with sort of supernatural whatever but there's always ends up being some kind of reason for most of it um but maybe that's not where they're going this season or it could be it could be you know maybe navarro has some sort of you know trauma that's happened she could have been around when whatever happened with you know the car accident or whatever you know when you have trauma your hippocampus it's like shrinks and your memories change and they become less and it's harder to recall things properly so it's possible that that's what's happening that like little bits of memories are starting to kind of come back in that way to just be like oh okay i'm remembering this thing from the past that is you know connected to danvers because i'm working with danvers now so it's coming back (laughs) If I'm going to try to distill like the entire essence of this polar bear into just a handful of words, whether we're talking about, you know, the trauma that these characters have incurred Mm -hmm. or the community at large, it sort of really comes down to fight for the right thing. Be resilient, push towards what is meaningful, because in episode three, and it's, it's a very, very quick little thing, like I had to really go back and pause it, but... When you're looking at the protest scene where you have all the people that are there and, you know, Mm -hmm. Leah's there, there is a person at this protest who has a white eye patch. So it's sort of like an inversion of, you know, here's the polar bear, the all white creature with, Mm -hmm. with, you know, one eye is just missing. Here's a person with a white eye patch. Once again, there is... We could say, okay, is this person the polar bear? Because there are sort of these legends that polar bears, you know, in Inuit culture are actually just humans who can sort of shed their skin in different environments. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's easy to sort of read into that. But I think it's speaking in part to that. I think it's sort of playing into that idea. But I think it's also just sort of speaking largely about this idea that we're, I feel like, pretty strongly meant to sympathize a lot with, you know, the local Inuit people mm-hmm. who are around in Ennis and that they're trying to fight and be resilient for what it is that they believe in, which is these, you know, this mine that's coming in and destroying this land. Or, you know, somebody like Wheeler who's coming in and destroying a family. Like it's mm-hmm. sort of representing the natural order of things and what's happening on this show in the broader sense 
is what happens when you try to disrupt the natural order of things, whether it be through the mine or through whatever research is being done at Salal, which has clearly had some very bad effects so far. One of the things that I like the most about True Detective in general is that the show is usually very good at balancing like personal life stuff and then Mm -hmm. finding a way to sort of connect it to the frame of mind of the detectives that are dealing with a current case sort of thing. And the idea of, you know, the polar bear stuffy, the one-eyed polar bear, everything that went on with Holden, the accident, if it was an accident or if it was connected to Wheeler, Navarro and Danvers both dealing with whatever really happened with Wheeler, because we got a lie, right? Like, you know, she said that it was like, oh, they got there and they were both dead. That's not true. Only the girlfriend was dead. He was there whistling, twist and shout. So, you know, they're lying about some of it, but why? And, you know, what, what happened? You know, if he's connected to what happened to Holden, what happened to, you know, her husband, then that might be something where it's like, yeah, she decided to kill him. And while Navarro's like, I don't like what's happening Mm -hmm. here. I kind of understand what is happening here. And even though I don't like it, I'll go along with it, but I don't want to ever see you again. Yeah. I think there's so many just different layers of why this trauma is happening, how it's affecting characters after the fact, how it's affecting relationships, how it's affecting perception. It's all sort of rolled in. And this is what makes this show so great. And there's one more thing about this polar bear. And this is just sort of a reminder to everybody out there who likes to skip theme songs of stuff. And I know it's easy (laughs) because I know if you're watching this on Max, it has a little button that comes up and you can be like, skip intro. There's freaking polar bear imagery. In the theme song, and rest assured, just mentioned it earlier when we do our twist and shout video. I, I've, I've got the chef apron. I've got the chef. I've got. Oh, some, you be cooking. I've got some cooking to do when it comes to the theme song in relation to twist and shout. shout. But just when it comes to the theme song here with the polar bear, like it's involved there. I think we will continue to see the polar bear probably through every single episode of this show. They may not directly explain it but i think whether it's through this video or through whatever theory sort of exists out there i think we can all sort of extract what you know isa lopez is trying to say in relation to it the characters in the community listen opening credits especially for murder mystery shows they're really important like if you watch only murders in the building like we do those credits change every single episode to add a little clue for you we're watching Mm -hmm. death and other details right now There was a huge, like, clue in these credits the whole time that here in episode four all of a sudden was like, oh, wow, that, like, just opened up everything. So that's my PSA. Watch the credits. (laughs) There you go. All right. Well, there you have it. That is the polar bear on True Detective Night Country explained. But you know, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more True Detective coverage. Check out that card right there if you want to watch our theory video about Tuttle United and why that matters so much within yeah. the world of this show. Also, thank you so much to our patrons. Join our Patreon. We got a link in the description below over there for some more exclusive content. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you guys here next time.